Hello, this is Dr. John Dundon. I'd like to thank you all for your time. I'm here to present our research on computer-assisted navigation and how it improves S-tablet component positioning precision and revision total hip arthroplasty. I would like to first thank uh, my co-authors, Wayne Poprosky out of Rush, Rand Schwarzkopf out of NYU, Brian Barlow out of San Diego, John Vidorchik out of HSS, and Jeff Demure from IntelliJoint. Attached are disclosures. I don't have any, but the co-authors are attached as well. You can see these in print. First, a little background on what we're trying to accomplish. The prevalence of total hip arthroplasty has been increasing significantly over the past several years, with over 600,000 procedures expected annually by 2030. Revision total hip arthroplasty cases are increasing also, with up to 14% of these cases expected to be revision total hip arthroplasty cases in the future. Optimal placement of component position, whatever that may be defined as, during revision surgery is critical to avoid re-revision. Computer-assisted navigation has been shown in some limited studies to improve the accuracy and precision of component placement in primary total hip arthroplasty. However, its role in revision surgery is much less well documented. Re-revision is required in up to 25% of revision total hip arthroplasty cases of which 36% are caused by instability. Uh, this places a significant burden on the healthcare system and highlights some of the importance of accurate component placement. The purpose of this study was to evaluate the effect of computer system navigation on component placement and revision total of arthroplasty as compared with conventional revision total of arthroplasty. The methods, uh, these Patients were 126 revision total hip arthroplasty procedures, 59 using conventional methods, and 67 using an images computer assisted navigation system. All surgeries were performed by the authors, and all are high volume revision total hip arthroplasty surgeons. Primary outcomes were estabulic component placement, both in antiversion and inclination, and they were measured preoperatively and postoperatively. Our analysis included the proportion of acetabular components placed in the functional safe zone, and they were compared between the navigation and the conventional total hip arthroplasty revision groups. Uh, attached is an intraoperative screenshot, so you can see what we're looking at intraoperatively. And we were able to get changes in our hip center, along with leg lengths and offset, and you can see in the bottom right, we we're also able to get a screenshot of component position afterwards. Now we could map this preoperatively and postoperatively so we could actually see the reference planes and the changes in our component position. These revisions consisted of simple acetabular component exchanges all the way to pelvic discontinuities and large defect cases. So there's a large variation in acetabular defects that we're seeing. Now our cup assessment was not done on the screen, our assessment was done radiographically, postoperatively, and we used the TraumaCAD software from Brain Lab in order to determine our component version and inclination. So results, acetabular component position improved postoperatively in both the navigation and control groups. Significant improvements were noted in variance, indicating improvement in precision in the acetabular component placement postoperatively. What you can see on line two is that the variance improved significantly in both the navigation group and in the conventional group. Although the antiversion increased significantly in the navigation group alone, whereas it did not happen in the conventional group. Here you can see our proportion of acetabular components within the safe zone. You can see that in both inclination and antiversion, they trended towards improvement in the navigation group compared to the conventional group. Although this came close in the antiversion group, this only trended towards significance and did not reach this. Postoperative variance in that type of component orientation was improved in the navigation group as well, and this actually reached significance in the antiversion group comparing the navigation and control groups. Here we have our scatter plots uh, showing pre and postoperative uh, scattergrams for both the control groups, which are A and B, and the navigation groups, which are C and D. A and C are preoperative, B and D are postoperative. And when you compare B to D, B being the control group and D the navigation, you can see a much tighter uh, grouping of our acetabular component position in the navigation group compared to the control group. This did reach statistical significance for antiversion. 
So in discussion, revision total hip arthroplasty is technically demanding, and the use of anatomic landmarks for component positioning are often disrupted and can even be destroyed. Imageless computer navigation can provide a useful tool to assist the surgeon with component positioning. This can minimize outliers and improve positioning component placement, and this may contribute to decreasing potential risk for revision in the future. Our data indicates that the use of imageless navigation and revision total hip arthroplasty can improve position, especially the acetabular antiversion, and may contribute to lower rates of re-revision in the future. Further studies are needed to determine the clinical impact of this in revision total hip arthroplasty, and limitations of our study include low patient numbers, retrospective design, and follow-up limited determiners. Our references, I would like to thank you for your time.